Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft Update Aquatic video. I'm going to be showing you a trident farm in this one. And that was made possible thanks to the new mob that was added in Snapshot 18w11a. If you didn't see my overview video on the new mob and all the things added in that snapshot, check out the link on the top right of your screen or in the description box down below. And in that video, I covered the new drowned mob. Here it is right here. And this one, I'm not going to talk about the mob itself too much. We know that it drops a trident. And I've got a simple concept here on how to farm the trident from this mob. Now this is going to be like a casual overview video. I'm not going to go into too much detail because many of you have probably already figured out how you're going to do this. I was reading the comments on my overview video. Lots of people thinking the same thing that I was thinking. A mob cage, zombies, water. It's a simple way to get drowned mobs. So we've got a spawning room right here. It's big enough so that the spawn rates don't get lowered. When the zombies are in the water at the bottom, they are not going to stop other zombies from spawning. And then we simply funnel them into some water down the bottom where they can hang out. And after about 36 seconds of being in the water, they will turn into a drowned mob. Now they do not need to be fully submerged. They can actually just stand in the water at the bottom and eventually they can will convert which means they can do that standing in the water up above so this farm may look a little bit quirky but there's some reasoning to the way that I've done things here when I press this button on the side um, we're going to activate this lamp which is going to be on for about 36 seconds and then when it turns off all of the zombies in the water at the bottom here uh, should have turned into drowns. Now what I'm also going to do is spawn a whole bunch of zombies in manually and you can see the reason why we might want to do this. It's because we're going to have a load of zombies hanging out in the water up above and we don't want them dropping into this area where we have our drowned mobs as we want to you know kill them and not the zombies. The thing is when they're standing in water like this up the top they can still actually turn into drowns. So you can end up with a whole bunch of drowns hanging out at the top there and if you haven't spotted what we've done I've used trapdoors to stop them from falling into the area at the bottom so anyway the, the lamp goes off after 36 seconds that means that all of the zombies in the bottom area here would have turned into drowns and I can go ahead and uh, kill them now I've got a, a looting 95 sword over here and a regular sword that you can get in survival so this is the type of wow that's noisy <laughs> they're all converting up the top there now this is the type of sword that you would want in survival. With looting free, you have an 8% chance of getting either a trident or a gold ingot from these mobs. Without looting on it, it's only a 5% chance. Uh, the thing is, they can convert and they can naturally spawn with tridents in their hands. If they do have a trident in the hand, as it currently stands, they will drop that trident as well as you having that 8% chance. So there is a chance that you can get two tridents from one mob and you can get some gold as well. So anyway, when I press this button another time, we're not going to activate the timer again. We're going to... Um, let the trap doors open so that all the mobs can fall down into here and mostly they're drowned at the moment right let's let them all shuffle in we should have a few more zombies spawning from up above and again the idea with this is that uh, you will separate the, the zombies that are newly spawned from dropping into this area down the bottom here and now it looks like the drowns are getting uh, a little bit funky Anyway, let's talk about the design here. I'm going to use this sword to kill them so you can see it in action. Um, this will create an absolute ton of items. And items now float in water. So the reason that we don't have too high um, water here to fully submerge the mob is because all of those items that are floating won't get picked up by the hoppers. Now the current situation is that they're full. If I start to take these items out manually, um, you'll see it's able to pick up the items that are floating on the water up above. So that's the reasoning for doing things like that. And then the hoppers point into chests. I've set it up with the trapdoors at the top and the chest like this so you can walk all the way in here and you can pick up the XP although it seems it's getting caught in the hopper I could have swore that I tested that a moment ago so maybe you actually want to put it so that the trap uh, sorry the chests are perhaps below the hoppers and you've got some sort of fence here so that you can kind of walk a little bit closer and pick up that XP I thought I figured that one out apparently I hadn't so it needs some tweaking uh, let's press this what I'm going to do now is quickly just disable the spawner up the top there and I'll show you the redstone behind the scenes. So something like this might be a more adequate redesign. You can get right up close to those hoppers and get any XP that courts in them. But anyway, let's go and check out the redstone. This is probably going to look complicated and like a mess, but I've color-coded it so it's actually 
pretty simple to understand. So let's start with the light blue circuit. On the other side over there, there is the button. So this just creates a T flip flop over here, which means that either this circuit over here will be on or this one will be on. So when we press it once, we're going to turn this circuit off. The orange circuit is simply powering um, the trap doors at the front here, which means they're in that state right there. So when I press the button, we close them. When I press it again, we open them so that zombies can continue to fall down. That much is pretty simple. Now, when the redstone uh, block here gets pulled backwards, when we press the button, it's going to activate this, which only gets activated once. This is like uh, another sort of, I think it's called a falling edge circuit. Uh, anyway, it means the second time we press the button, this doesn't get activated again. That's really important because we only want our timer to get activated once. So the green circuit here is an EFO hopper clock. And what we've done is we put an observer on the comparator there. The way this is set up means that all the items are on this side. They move across into that side. They go back again, which means that that comparator gets updated twice. It gets updated um, at the beginning of the 36 seconds and at the end. So with it pointing into that block, powering this piston, that's going to move over here. And then after 36 seconds, it comes back over here. So to summarize, when we press the button, we activate the timer, which is going to activate that straight away. And then after 36 seconds, pull it back. We have also closed uh, these doors right here. Now what I can go ahead and do is press the button, even though the timer is still running. And like I said, that yellow circuit isn't going to activate again. You see it didn't do anything except the block there come down and these things have been opened again. So pretty simple redstone to get the stuff working. So a couple of things to note. If you have a chicken jockey spawn, well that's something else. We'll get to that in a second. If you have a chicken jockey spawn, it's just going to hang out up there and you're going to have to deal with it. Another thing is that when the zombies convert into the drowned mob, they can actually glitch entirely through blocks without taking damage. This guy has just wandered from around the, the back here. There's another one there as well. That's something to consider. Um, haven't really tested that with reinforcing the walls, you know, take, making them too wide. So maybe that's something you'd like to do if you were to build this farm for yourself. Uh, but that's a big one to watch out for because they can glitch through and that is obviously uh, super irritating. But uh, we got some in there with tridents, which means that they can drop those on death. And it's a trident farm after all, right? Let's see if we got any. Yep, we got a trident. Amazing. So there you go, a simple trident farm. If you have enjoyed it, then leave a like on the video. As always, thank you for your support. And make sure you subscribe to keep up with all of the update videos from me. I will have another trident-related video coming for you very soon on the weekend. But anyway, that is it from me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.